22nd century discovery. Hello and good wow. evening for this Thursday, April 4th, 2024, Star Trek Discovery Season 5, Episodes 1, Red Directive, and Episode 2, Under the Twin Moons, are over. But we're just getting started here on Live Long and Podcast for our live stream review here on Facebook, YouTube, and on Twitch. I'm Dave Mater, and I'm joined with a fabulous away team to break down this episode tonight and talk, well, two episodes, actually, talk all about it. It has been two years since we've even talked about Discovery, over two years, actually um since the last season so we're gonna break it all down uh you know starting us off we have uh the man from federation headquarters himself the lieutenant junior grade we got michael chan with us hello hello michael he's back he's back back from working with admiral vance and he is ready to talk about the admiral vance the admiral himself Mm -hmm. uh coming at us as well we have ashley millard the quiz admiral. admiral The quiz admiral. Yeah, I'm also an admiral. I would let I would let Vance be a bad moral with me for sure. Ooh. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> with that said, uh, we'll go to the bad who might also be bad moral with Admiral Vance. Is it uh, Chris Worldmind Murphy? How do you know? Uh, I'm I'm I, I I I got nothing. I got no quips. I'm I'm stunned by all this glorious action that uh, we're about to talk about here on Star Trek and all this. For a second, I thought you were Triple H. Yeah. Oh yeah. well, the game is <laughs> about all, to begin. <laughs> all of the glory, it said, you know, without guys. Spoilers, ahoy! If you have not watched these two episodes, get the hell out of here and go watch them. What are you waiting for? Yeah, and then come back. A spoiler alert! <laughs> this is a, that's our spoiler alert because we will be talking all about these two episodes, and then we'll, you know, we'll probably speculate on what's to come. But uh, yeah, we got two episodes to talk about, and I guess I always like to just kind of get first impressions off the bat from the panel. We'll start with um, with World Mind. Uh, How did you feel about these first two episodes tonight? I uh, hmm. well, there was some cool moments, but there was a lot of meh, and there was a there was one particular uh, storyline that I'm just like, why are we doing this again? Didn't we do this in season two? I'm sure I'm pretty certain we've done this in this these. These conversations we've done so uh, i don't know it was it was it was um a I mixed find, bag a mixed bag i find with discovery they always start weird awkward and in sort of a weak way but they always stick the landing to make it like good so i i kind of didn't expect much from these first two episodes and hey although i do i did like the setup of what you know they're going for though so right okay well quick quick punch okay not 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 super thrilled coming off the bat but let's go to ashley next ashley how are you feeling about the uh the start of season five here i love them i love both of them i was absolutely enthralled with both episodes both episodes no uh no no reservation no issues um small little things but for the most part i think that the two years off was great, and I think they did a good job of getting us back into it after those two years. Okay, and uh, Michael, um, you know, same question to you. I'm, and I'm in the same boat as Ashley. I I was I had so much fun. I really enjoyed the the first two episodes. I uh, admittedly only listened to the first episode, which is interesting because without the visuals. Um, it allowed for me to kind of have to actually process the story differently. And in that way, I felt like, I don't know, it really, it really, it was really good. Like if they can convince me without any visuals uh, and, 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 and like entertain me without any visuals and feel like Star Trek without any visuals, then I'm impressed. Episode two then, uh, when I was able to actually watch in here uh, was everything I expected after hearing episode one. And it's just, I'm enjoying where they're going. I mean, obviously there will always be little things here and there. And that this is with every episode of Star Trek ever made. There will always be things that I'm like, eh, uh, uh, but overall super happy. 
Okay. And uh, I say I'm probably myself a little closer to Murphy's point of view where I'm sort of mixed on uh, things. I think I did enjoy aspects of this, uh, both of these episodes greatly. There, there, And there are things I'm not so happy we're back doing again. Uh, in particular, a lot of the interpersonal drama between the characters, I think, is sort of where I'm stuck a little bit. M yes. Maybe the book and Michael relationship. Mm. Yeah, um, I agree. I agree. I, 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 I'm not a big fan of the unnecessary breakup of book and Michael just to stick them back on the same ship for the rest of the season and have that like, will they, won't they, awkward. Like, they, they have. Just let them have it. So what? In the, in the whole, you didn't, you didn't call. You didn't call either. You are both in a future where communication is a blink of an eye. Why didn't you communicate to each other? You're still like, human, what? I guess. You're still, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I get that. You're busy on the job. I get that too, but dude, what happened last season though? Come on, man. Book well, boy. yeah, he did try to like, I don't know, do some pretty bad stuff book and he kind of got community service, you know, and now he's kind of working his way yeah. back in. But, but like, uh, I don't know if it's the community service that staled the relationship or whatnot, but I just, I don't find them breaking up believable really. It just sort of comes out of left field and feels like a necessary pitch and story to just sort of add a little more drama to everything. I, it's just I could I see how you could see that. that. Like I, I understand that. I think uh without the the time between being shown on screen, I think it is sudden, but uh, personally like I understand where the writing is coming from only because that would be a big issue. Like I can relate to that, right? Like, like book really did try to do bad things and didn't really lay it out for for Michael and Mike. The, the two of them were on opposite sides of of ideology and thought. And considering how close they've been for the amount of time that they were together, whether as lovers or as careers or or whatever, you know, I think that was just a lot of. A lot to take now they're both hard-headed individuals so the, i that's why i'm like of course they didn't of course they didn't call each other that is so typical of both characters yeah uh but again because it it did i mean it's episode one of what 10 mm, uh i think uh, is it i think it's up to 13 potentially this season yay uh, still yeah, i'll take 13 Honestly, yeah, like if I know Star Trek Discovery, they tend to tie up things like this quicker. So the pace, mm -hmm. like a lot of it's it's like when when we were looking at the 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 whole family dynamic of Culber and Stamets and, and their kids, right? It if in in it feels too fast in a way, but that part of it is because of how few episodes we actually have so, um, in this I, I, I was mistaken this will only be 10 season or 10 episodes this oh season. boy um yeah, the, the, the two previous seasons were 13 episodes each yeah, um, yeah. 10 is becoming the the norm you know I've but noticed. one of my one of my critiques of last season was i thought that the story was spread over too many episodes you know the, the long arc and i thought that they could have cut it down to 10 potentially and so oh, maybe they oh, there we go we're at 10 here we are. Um, just before we get into all the visuals, we got a couple questions here in the live chat. One from the ex, uh, the you know, fellow uh, Federation podcasters, X-rated, asking, "I heard Admiral Vance smells like a Balerian canopy. Is it true, Michael Chan?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, all I know is he smells damn good. Well, <laughs> if Balerian canopies smell good, then uh, then so does he. Uh, uh, Jody Simpson just well not much of a question but just saying his favorite parts were all the Star Wars scenes um, that, well we, we could talk about that I think that they, like we'll when they went to that that, um, that planet with the avalanche I could definitely see some Star Wars things being brought up there and um, and, and another question here from, from Damon J or Di he's a diamond um, that's David Jones uh, he's one of the background actors from Strange New Worlds Okay, well, and he's asking, what's it like to review a show oh, okay. that you were actually a part of in a previous season? Yeah, it uh, feels amazing. Not as amazing as keeping the fact that I was in the show from my my fellow uh, <laughs> uh, review mates last season. That right. was fun. Mm. 
Yeah, because yeah, because uh, last season we were watching it and we had no idea you were going to be on. Although you did give us kind of hints with your enthusiasm for the episode that day, so, and, and uh, my continued wearing of yellow every single time. Like, right. <laughs> there were the things I just don't. Yeah, you know, I don't read between lines as oh, well. Oh, I know. So it's it's, like, it's meant for future viewings. Well, I'll, I'll say like, personally, yeah. I was I was just aching for a Lieutenant Chan in, in a scene in these episodes and disappointed not to see yeah. a single one. So I'm I'm fingers crossed, but who knows, I guess. Who knows? Yeah, like, hey, we'll see. Well, like, if he, even if he was, he can't tell us. So, mm-hmm. um, but with all that, let's get into the story. Let's, okay, so we're going to talk, we're going to start with Red Directive. Always like to run through the visuals and just the screenshots. I'm not going to go on the previously on. There was some like what was kind of setting up this season not going to get into that let's we're just going to talk about the plot line um of these uh of this episode so we start off with just a shot of space uh and we see a ship at warp um you know and as we go into the warp field we find out well hey it's michael burnham on the hull of this ship in an ev suit she is trying to do something she's talking to discovery and uh she's you know she's she's on an adventure guys she's trying to get in there First of all, I want to say that was one of the coolest visuals that Discovery has really introduced was like the imagery of the warp bubble running through space and then they like pull into the like bubble itself and get close. Like I thought that was an amazing shot. It did look cool. It was really cool. I'm now seeing this for the first time. That (laughs) was so cool. It sounded amazing. It sounded <laughs> the visuals were even better, Holy and then um, an interesting device, you know, often used in TV. They go, okay, well, Michael Burnham's on, on the hold of the ship trying to get in, and what's happening? Well, let's go back four hours ago to Federation headquarters, a place you're familiar with, uh, Michael Chan. Yes, I am. Um, you know, uh, and uh, and we see here it's the crew of Discovery, uh, Michael Burnham. We got Tilly, Stamets, Colber, and Blue. Oh, no, that um, sorry, the character's name Blue. is Blue. Uh, <laughs> That's the real name. That's the actor yeah. name. Um, uh, the character. Are, yeah. Help me out here, guys. What's um, this character's name? Um, oh. Oh. What's her name? I'm not sure who, who you, what we're speaking. This of. one. Are talking about? The, the Trill. Oh. Adira. Adira. Oh, the Dira. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> so... Um, Anyway, they're having a Federation cocktail. It was called the 2161. but it, And it's been over a thousand years since the founding of the Federation, since the time of Archer here, everyone. Um, they're all in their fancy dress uniforms. Um, you know, we going at those, the... Eh? You can get those in Toronto. Oh, the dress uniform? No, the, the drink. The drink. Oh, the drink. Have you not seen them before? Do they, do no. they sell them at Offworld Bar? Uh, yes, they do. They do. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. Do they come in those glasses? Unfortunately, no. But the glasses they do come in are oh. amazing. Do they yeah. also stick their like finger in your drink to pop the bubble? <laughs> I mean, no. You pop the bubble. You you stick your uh, finger. In. Okay. Because oh, when they showed this scene, cool. the, the waitress, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the person that brought this drinks just like sticks their fingers in everyone's drink real quick to like pop the bubble, and I was oh, like, "Oh, it's Starfleet. Everyone's." Sanitized. Sanitary, yes. Yeah, they were yeah it's right. so sanitary also, then. Also, Tilly pulling the hairstyle fresh from the 80s. Um, Come on, I love interesting it. Interesting choice. Interesting yeah. to- choice. She had I the big it. hair going on tonight. Um, she was going at it. And, we, and like some of the crew, uh, Tilly in particular, she's not on Discovery officially. She's now a, a teacher at the Academy. That was set up last season. Mm-hmm. Um there's also talk here by uh, Stamets in the scene where he he's mentioning that the um, they're not going to build more spore drives. I guess their Discovery is going to be the only ship that has a spore drive. They're not going to put them into every other Starfleet ship. Why? Because well, they say it because Discovery is one of a kind, and I guess oh. that's what they the way they like but it. They also uh, have a different thing that went out with their patents and stuff. I mean, if there is something more efficient, yeah. Um, this was I, the weirdest choice. I don't know why they did this, where they like the, gave this uh, yeah. little graphic that popped up and like flew it. There was some weird editing choices in this episode that was like, what are they doing? Why are we doing? It's this? a name tag. It's a digital name tag it's on Stamets. Yeah, it's his luminary. Did, but did he like press his like lapel to make that happen and yes. everybody could yes. see it? Is that what I was also happening? think this was supposed to be comedy? Okay. Um, kind of, but it was also a like. Bit. The, 
the 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 scene it was also about like Stamets feeling like his his uh, mark in history is is going to be forgotten. You know, we'll get to that later on. We talk yeah. about the android and how the Soon name is still revered and his name might be forgotten. And I don't know. There, I think that a lot of this is what kind of what we're setting up for his his arc this season. But just then, um, uh, Captain Burnham gets pulled away. Duty calls for an urgent uh, thing, uh, and Tilly's making eyes at this guy across the room. Yep, this um, you Jake know, Jake Gyllenhaal looking dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I guess they're setting that up for this season uh, because they go back to her room at one point, but they, uh, you know, she ends up, uh, nothing happens. Um, again, another relationship that had been kind of established last season uh, was uh, Saru and uh, President Tarina of Vulcan, yeah. or I guess it's Navarre uh, now in the 32nd century. Uh, they're they're uh, going pretty strong, everybody. You know, they're they're a good relationship. She was going to mind melt him, but we find out that he he tells her that he uh, he's been offered a job as an ambassador for the Federation, and that he um, you know he would have to leave Starfleet. And she's like, well, don't you know? But if I do, I can be closer to you, Tarina. And she goes, don't make factor me into your decision making. Uh, you have to do the right thing for you. So uh, we'll come back to that, I guess. Um, See, when I when I look at that relationship, the only thing that runs through my mind is the same thing that runs through my mind when I look at two stegosauruses. How do they have sex? Dude, come on. <laughs> this is where your mind goes? They're old. They're not, they don't need. I mean, also, I mean, I don't know. Psychic sex? I don't know. Yeah, they have psychic maybe. sex. I, yeah, I could buy now. that. I could buy that. Absolutely. If that's what, if that's what, like, maybe that's why she went for the mind meld. He's exactly. like, exactly. Oh, simmer down there. Yeah. Okay, all right. I'll get Seriously. that. I can get behind that. I was just like the physicality of it. I'm like, does that even biologically, how does this, it's just, it's like, you know, thinking of, you know, Hey, there, there's things. lots of things you can do in the bedroom. I'm sure they're happy. Yeah, I'm sure they're happy. Absolutely. Just wait until she hits Pond Far, and then he might be the one in danger. So, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> I mean, he's gonna shoot some spikes, and it's gonna be like, <laughs> yeah, action. There's a reason they call him Action Saru. <laughs> So this this thing this... that's handed to Ma Michael Burnham in the in the in the episode, this little figure eight thing, which I guess is part of the red directive. It's a key. It's a key. I believe this is a key that takes them to this infinity has... room. And I flipped my table. I was like, "What is this? We just have what? We just have this now? We have infinite? We have they they they, they what was it? Mister Poe's time room from Dragon Ball Z, basically." Like, sure. is this the is this like the cone of silence from Get Smart? It feels like it. It's supposed yeah. to be, from my understanding of it, essentially like it, it's like when you scramble a call, you know, in our time, okay. right? It's like so it's a black ops device that puts you into, I guess, the closest thing for us to understand is a pocket universe. But really, it's like the cone of silence yeah, it, it is it is a cone of silence and no one can hear you and it's secure right. and, and here we go into the infinity room which is or the matrix room. or the matrix or uh -huh. whatever uh construct you want to need call guns it. i love it yeah. it's in the opening eh yeah, it's pretty early in the episode. It's before the, even the credits. Uh, of course, we have uh, David Cronenberg back as, um, what's his character's name? Kovic? Cool. Um, yeah, he's Kovic. like this. I don't even, still don't even know what his job is exactly, but uh, he's, he's just the smoking guy from X Files. That's basically yeah, his role. <laughs> he's that guy. He's the smoky man. He's the man. He's the. Anyway, so Discovery's on a top secret mission. Kovic is going with them. And, and, you know, this is all happening. Of course, you know, we only went back four hours. So uh, the reception's over and we're headed out to the mission because we have to go out to the edge of the beta quadrant to look for a Romulan ship, an 800 year old Romulan ship, actually. Um, and it's classified and top secret. And Kovic was, is not telling much about what this mission's about. But we need to go, and uh, and then we get to see this Romulan ship. Uh, interesting I, that this ship showed up in this episode because this is the Romulan scout ship, uh, as seen in Star Trek: The Next Generation. One of Davin's favorite all-time ships, I know, because mm. we ranked it in the uh, sh in the starship rankings, and uh, you know this was I, I know one of his favorites. So we get to see that here in this episode. It looked great, I thought, and uh, with the graphics, and uh, and we get to meet, I guess, our villains for the season. Um, trying to remember Straight their from names. Tron. <laughs> yeah, um, with their Tron helmets on. Oh, I love it. Uh, they, from Lock and their Lock and Mole. Lock and Mole. That's their names. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Uh, they show up in these helmets initially, but uh, those Tron helmets do come off, uh, you know, pretty it looks early so in the cool. scene. I love it. Sorry, uh, yeah. I, I, <laughs> only list, I have no idea what they look like. Wow. We we get to, we get to meet our yeah guys our villains Locke okay. and, Locke and cool. Mole. They they don't say what species Locke is, but like when he takes the helmet off, he's a jelly man for like the majority of the transition until he's like, Ugh, yeah, well we can Correct. breathe, yeah. But he's apparently a species the Federation's never seen before, so I don't know. Um, it's it'd be curious to see what he's about. But uh, yeah, they seem like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of a pair, right? Like that's yeah. kind of what the, who they are, and they're here looking for this device, um, and they're searching the ship for it. Uh, and they're bad guys, but they seem to like each other. They're they're in love with each other, and that's important. Anyway, did you so, also wonder how they had sex? I did not. Uh, but I was no, I I, I didn't because I didn't really think about those two having a relationship. I really was just like, oh, they're just like you know, thieves that work like crime together. You know, I didn't really at oh, any they're point definitely put in love though. They okay. were in love. Until like later on in the story when they pointed it out and I was like, Oh, I guess. Okay. So I, I haven't really had time to gel on that, but I guess she has time to gel on him or he has time to gel on her because he's a jelly man. Maybe yeah, maybe we'll get more answers around that, Murphy. I don't know. Um <laughs> anyway, so Michael Burnham and the crew the away team, they're getting ready to go over to the other ship and try to figure get this thing and uh and and, and she says phasers on stun and Kovic says, No phasers on stun. You could kill everybody over there. I don't care. This is too important. This is a red directive. You, you're, by you're, any this, means necessary. By any means necessary. I'm like, you shouldn't have picked Michael Burnham if you wanted this to be your directive. You should definitely <laughs> have sent somebody else. Um, but anyway. Or you want someone uh, to obey orders. Obey <laughs> orders or not worry about she like, never I guess. Yeah. She's, Her hesitation uh, was what she dropped the ball, literally. Right. And she even tells, even when she beams over later on, she says, Phaser's on stun to start, guys. Like, come on. Like, I know what Kovic said, but it doesn't matter. Um, so then we get into the credits. But the, the, I guess the, the, of the heart. Sorry. Every time the, I see these credits, I think of Enterprise. No, I don't. Um, but uh, just to, wanted to note that, uh, you know, we have a new cast member uh, in Callum Keith Rennie, uh, who's uh, this new captain um, character that, Rainer. you know, by the end. Rainer, who by the end of the second episode will be asked to become the new first officer of Discovery. Uh, he's from Battlestar Galactica, Canadian actor, uh, you, uh, you know, and uh, he's now he's part of this main cast for this last season. Yeah, so. I recognize him from some old shows. I just can't remember what shows they were, but he I was know on um, like bad guys and stuff. Californication with uh, David. Yes, Huckabee. he was on Californication. Oh my god, that's exactly where I remember him from. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank man. you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and there was a couple of new visuals added to the credits this season. One was this infinity device that was, we kind of showed earlier. I maintain that's some sort of key. If you hold it, it brings you to the magic room. See, it's got this little dot inside of it. No, I agree with uh, you. It so, yeah, there's like a little ball bearing in it that moves around. Yeah. And then the other thing we see is the, I guess this is the, the ship of Locke and Maul, uh, you know, which we see quite a bit in the episode. It's included in the credits for the season. Uh, so I'm, I'm sure we're going to be seeing them a lot. And uh, yeah, and that, and so this uh, first episode written by Michelle Paradise, uh, no surprise as she's the showrunner uh, for the last, or the th- these three seasons, the, you know, three, four, and five. So she wrote this and uh, oh, the old um, uh, Ola Tunde. Yeah, oh, Osu Sami. I, how do you say his name? Osu Sami. Uh, well, but he he's directed more episodes of um, Discovery than anybody. Uh, and he's amazing. He's he's so he's such a, a wonderful, wonderful director to work with. He's like super easy to work with. He's really good to the cast, good to the crew, and uh, I, I was so happy to see his name on here. Yeah, and he's on a lot of Strange New Worlds episodes too as a director. So uh, you know, they, they, he's been around. Um, okay, so getting into the episode, so it starts off here with Michael Burnham and uh, um, oh, I'm trying to remember their names: Awashiken and Reese. Is that the two bridge officers? The yes. Uh, yes. Um, Reese always, yeah. So they're on this mission with her. Uh, they got their tactical Starfleet vests on, their weight team vests on. Uh, you know, they look they're looking good. Uh, and they're looking for Lock and Maul here. They can't detect them right away, but they're looking around the ship. 
Um, eventually, they find the bedroom of this dead 800, an 800-year-old Romulan who's been, uh, you know, the scientist that was part of what they're here for in the first place. Um, and it's then that they start looking around. I think that eventually they're... Okay, they're I, look- I, gotta, I gotta raise one question about their suits. Yeah. There's nothing that's as tactical like glowing shoulders. Why do they have glowing shoulders? Those, I assume those are the flashlights. Are they yeah, meant I don't, to be flashlights? I don't think so. I think they're just meant to look futuristically cool. Uh, yeah, uh, it feels like they're just meant to look trony and there. futuristic. I mean, that's fair. I think that's why they have glowing shoulders, because it is dark in there. I, yeah. I don't know. It, it I think it's, like just a, an, it's just an accent. Choice. Yeah. Um, I don't mind them, honestly, like as as a uniform, uh, you know. Did they do I, this in previous seasons, though? Like, I don't remember yeah. the glowing shoulder. Did they? Uh, I don't specifically remember the glowing shoulder, but this this outfit has been used for the last three seasons. Yeah, I recognize like the the you know away mission battle outfit, but I just the shoulder seemed like a new touch. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I just um, like I said, I I thought they were used for light because it's genuinely dark in there. A lot. I think it's also just to see the the the, the outline of the person. But you're right, Murphy. Tactically sound, you don't want to be seen. So it's kind of a. It is a. It, but it's okay. It's the future. Uh, and, I'm sure uh, they can turn you know, it off uh, if they need to. Yeah. If they need to be a little more hope. stealth. They'd be able to turn them off. I would hope. Yeah. yeah. So uh, do they get into? Yeah, they get. Yeah, they get attacked here, and uh, lock them all. Hit them. Um, hit Reese and uh, Awushikan with like this. Like I don't know. Like suspended Energy animation yeah. field um they just narrowly miss michael burnham here so she's not caught in this little like whatever it is energy field uh yeah. so she goes after them and uh w- this is my favorite thing is that uh she took the phaser he t- she takes her phaser her hand phaser and she's able to turn it into a phaser rifle uh by like wasn't that your favorite thing you were it's one this? of them i, I love Dave it. loves a phaser rifle I, I like mean, when I, you could turn things into other things as well. Um, I I like a good phaser rifle, and I was just so blown away. I was like, "Wait, did she just turn her phaser into a phaser rifle?" And it's just that like, was just badass. I yeah, I, I was so confused about the mechanics of how it worked, and I wanted to know more. It's programmable then, matter. Oh right, they have yeah. that whole jazz. The future, right? Yeah. Right. I forgot well, I mean, we already know that their phasers are actually just a little button thingy, right? Like right, right. here. Yeah. And so that transforms into a phaser into their hand. It makes yeah. complete sense for this era. For the, the yeah, the so for it to then change, it would take more power, but to ch- be able to change into that makes sense to me. Yeah, so I like that. So then she starts shooting at them with the phaser, the, the modified phaser rifle, uh, and then um, uh, this what's his name? Locke. He throws this yeah. like um, device. <laughs> Basically, he blows a hole in the um, in the ship. Because they, it's like a little shoot. black hole, like, like trip mine. Like it literally, it literally, when it exploded, it turns into a black hole and then eats a hole into the ship, like right to space. Right, and th- this mm-hmm. is where he, where he throws it because she's trying to get that that uh, puzzle box, the Romulan puzzle box, but uh, that's not gonna happen. As we see it explodes, and this is the other thing I really enjoyed is she gets sucked out into space, and then her uh, EV suit automatically. Mm-hmm activates around her mm-hmm. uh and she i was like there's so many people who got sucked down into space in previous centuries that would have really liked this uh this adaptation yeah. um you know and because this is also what happens in like the star trek online video game if you go into like a an environment that you can't breathe your suit will just activate automatically um uh, and uh you know that's 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 handy but do so you, they're trying you probably have to be wearing one of those chess pieces so like if you're just walking in a ship regularly and got attacked and sucked out to space and you didn't have that on you probably would just yeah i think you have to be wearing the tactical uh, yeah. outfit and maybe that's why they light up uh says they have to uh you know become an ev that's a good point actually that makes sense as to why you might want to add some lights to a suit like okay all right all right i rescind my my (laughs) (laughs) so anyway so then um then michael burnham is uh out there in in space in her suit and but she sees the uh mock mall ship and she's able to somehow like attach herself to it with her magnetic boots and then that's kind of where magnets this catches up to where we started off to start off the episode with her inside the warp bubble of the ship uh, trying to get inside. Uh, so we kind of caught up to the teaser. And uh, and yeah, like she's asking uh, for the ship. And then I, I guess this other ship shows up, the Antares, right? 
I think that's the name yeah, of it. So it's mm-hmm. Captain Rainer's ship. Captain Rainer's ship. I gotta tell you guys though, I'm I really hate these detached nacelles of this new era. I was, yeah, I don't know. I, I have no problems with it. It's vibing with it. Ugh. I just like um anyway. I have I'm I don't know, I'm not gonna get into it. How do, but how, how does it make sense? One, so. How does how do they stay but, connected? Going through such high speeds, like, even through what? <laughs> well, like later on when they crash the ship on the planet, I'm like, you could have left the nacelles in orbit. Like you didn't need to bring them down with you. Um, but whatever. Uh, that scene. I think they're supposed to be scratch. needed. Regardless, I like the look of that ship. Like, because if you remember last season, basically all the ships are like these white, smooth things, right? Yeah. Or yeah, either they're like round or they're like just very flat. But this one is like almost like Discovery in that it's like a, a combo of old and new looking stuff. And I, apparently, I, this was a, a discarded Discovery concept that this ship is based on. Oh, I didn't know. I love it. I oh. love this ship. Yeah, um, and I don't mind the profile. I like the saucer and things like that. But anyway, so um, so there's this whole fight between her and Rainer as they're meeting each other over the comm as as he's helping to get the tractor beam on the ship. She's she's basically ordering him off because it's going to result in disaster, and he doesn't want to do it. Um, and he's you know this is kind of what we'll learn about him in, in these in this first episode especially that he's more about the mission than he is maybe about like life or. In terms of his priorities, he doesn't, he doesn't care, but he Michael Burnham is prioritizes differently uh, in terms of how, how she goes with certain he's 30 things. years into service. He's a grizzled veteran and he doesn't want to look the other way. Right. And you're going to let him get away. This is a losing. red directive, yeah. you know, um, where Mike, Michael's uh, not going to go that way. So anyway, they, they're, but eventually they have to call it off and Malak and Mal are managed to get away. Um, and you know, you know, because Michael was like, "Well, oh, don't worry about. It. We'll follow them later." But then they mask their warp trail uh, thirty ways. But before that, um, she gets launched into space, and then she's like flying here at the ship. Um, and they're like, "Don't worry, we're gonna beam you over in a second. I mean, right before she hits the window, they beam her basically from the other side of the window inside the ship. And then she just kind of keeps going and sits down in her chair. But she's a little shocked. I, we showed that in our little intro video tonight. Um, you know, that was a cool sequence, though. But it was a cool was. sequence. Like, it was very interesting. And I just kept thinking to myself, like, how strong are those magnets to hold her onto a ship <laughs> going at beyond light speed? Like, what's how, how do they manage this? This is amazing technology. I would assume that it's not just magnetism, but like because of the adaptive material, it might have melded into the actual hull. And if she's okay. inside the warp field. Technically, she's kind of contained within that. Oh, okay. um, yeah, as long as she's too. able to tether to it. So, um, yeah. So anyone's like, everyone's kind of like looking at Michael, like, "Are you okay?" But she's 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 not missing a beat. Uh, and then uh, we get to actually see Captain Rayner for the first time as he calls over, basically to yell at Michael Burham for letting them get away. Um, you know, and uh, kind of just you know expressing his displeasure. Uh, with the okay, whole so basically the technology they're communicating with, that's the technology O'Brien created, right? The hollow communicator? Yeah. 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 But it's a be- it's better because you don't have to be in that little box like in yeah. uh, Deep Space Nine. I, I just so. want them to mention, you know, Miles O'Brien, like how the communicator Invented this? Works. Yeah, but exactly. We, we saw in like even in the early seasons of Discovery, which took place in the 23rd century, that they had a kind of a <laughs> version of this already. It just didn't look as good, um, you know, back then, but... It got mm-hmm. kind of perfected over, over over the centuries. Um, anyway, so what is this? We go back to Federation. Oh, we, we need we need somebody who can help us track down Lock and Mall now that they've gone away. Let's go. So this leads Michael to uh, get reunited here with Book, and Book, uh, who's you know he's helping to um, help the refugees who were displaced by the like, the whole black dark matter phenomenon in the last season. Uh, but um, I get. Did they actually break up? Am I forgetting this? Or it's been two years. I think they broke up. They broke up. Okay. So there's some weirdness here. Um, they definitely haven't spoken in a while. Yeah. So they're not feeling like they're they're kind of off at least at the moment uh, in terms of their relationship. And uh, and there's some awkwardness here as he's back here to help them track down the the thieves, Lack and Maul. 
Uh, you can see like some of those visuals there. So we, we know Maul's human, um, and he's like an alien of unknown things, but they, they have multiple criminal accounts against them, including assault, armed robbery, suspected manslaughter, uh, piracy, interstellar, sabotage. I'm getting old. Oh, I have to read like this. Distortion. Wow. <laughs> oh, I'm reading it for you. Don't worry. Uh, Thank you. So, yeah. So... Anyway, they're uh, they're they're here on Discovery along with Admiral Vance and Kovic and Captain Rayner and Book, and they're all kind of you know trying to track where to go. But uh, you know, Book's just like, well, it's process of elimination. Like, if you have this item, you can only go to so many dealers for this twenty fourth century thing, and you can only um, you know, there's only there's, there's only so many options, right? So they narrow it down to basically one place, which is where we're we'll head in this episode. Kumau, I guess, is the name of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so that all kind of goes. Captain Rayner is ordered to go with uh, C- Captain Burnham by Admiral Vance and told to work together. Uh, and he doesn't like it too much because he's not he doesn't like uh, working playing with others. But uh, they kind of agree. They, he, he doesn't have a choice. And then we get a conversation after everyone leaves between Saru and Burnham where, you know, she, she talks to him about the fact that he's leaving as first officer. He's going to leave Starfleet, go become the ambassador, et cetera, et cetera um and uh whatever so i don't know what, what what's your guys like uh idea or thoughts on them, them choosing to i guess take saru off of discovery here oh coming in to join us oh hey uh, hey hey guys how are you good 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 greetings from fort mcmurray you're in the alta eh? i just got uh, here. I, I haven't watched the show. I just wanted to say hello to you all. And Michael, I haven't seen you for such a long time. Hello. It's been too long. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, oh. in video, I see you, but you, I don't see. So I just wanted to come and say, I, I, I'm dying to watch. I'm going to probably do that tonight, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, uh, like I said, I'm hoping to get in and, and see you next week. Okay. Well, yeah, we won't spoil anything for you here. We'll let you, it's no. two episodes, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. I saw your chat on that. So I will you know, get into it tonight. Right. And so we're just, we're just, we're in the first act, I'd say, or the second act of the first episode at this moment. So. All right. Um, well, since I don't have anything to add other than my greetings and, and, and uh, hope you guys are all doing well, I will uh, talk to you later, but have a great uh, show and I'll see you next week. Okay. All right. Thanks, Adam. We'll see you next week. Okay. Bye-bye. Take Bye. Care. Safe travels. Bye. All right. Well, uh, let's so let's get back into it. Um, so where were we? OK, so then we get the whole scene here with Tilly uh, and her Jake Gyllenhaal guy uh, where they're, she's talking about. I guess they're both teachers at the academy, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're talking about that. Um, and she's she's a little uh, intoxicated on Endorian champagne. Um, mm-hmm. And so there's some flirtiness yeah. going on here. They're both pretty awkward and I think it's adorable. It is yeah. very adorable, right? Yeah. Uh, this was maybe the, the one romance I didn't mind in the uh, two these two episodes. Um, yeah. So I think they've fun. they've written a good uh, person for her to be interested in because he's just as sort of nerdy and awkward as she is. Right. Yeah, it's an interesting pair, but they seem to have a chemistry. And she's, you know, obviously her, her faces are very telling, her expressions very telling. Um, you know, and she, you know, she's funny at times, you know, she's like, coffee, hot now. Uh, Michael calls <laughs> and she's like, you know, Michael, oh, you're using your serious voice, Michael. Okay, I'll get, you know, because uh, I basically Michael Burnham wants to know what this top secret mission is. Can you hack into the system for me, Tilly? Which, of course, Tilly's all for it. Um, so then Discovery is on the hunt there for Lock and Maul at this planet that they think that they're at. Uh, th- so I would say that this was, you know, you could, I, I did have that thought that this is very Tatooine-esque, this pla- the planet as in Star Wars. I don't necessarily have a problem with things being like Star Wars and Star Wars things being like Star Trek. You know, they both take place in space. Um, so, Ooh. you know. It's pretty. I can tell where they shot this too. Oh yeah. The back. Well, the back is the screen wall. Yeah. And then the all of this. St- yeah, the city is the screen wall, and then everyone here. Actually, the floor is a, is a green screen, and then every, all the like mechanical stuff that that's practical. So I I actually like I have been very happy that they were able to that we in Toronto actually have 
our own uh, screen wall, similar to what Mandalorian uses because okay. of how much larger and more populated we can actually make our scenery look. Um, and, and, and I, I think this looks amazing. Like, sorry, I'm just seeing it for the first time. This looks incredible. Yeah, no, the visuals were very good. You know, I, uh, I didn't have a problem yeah. with looking like Star Star Wars or what. I don't care. This looks. I, great. I don't care either. But you know, I don't know. Like I, I even Ashley, you've even said that like uh, things in um, Star Trek Prodigy feel too Star Wars oh, to you. Yeah, what, Prodigy just it makes me want. It it feels like Star Wars cartoons to me. Like every time I'm watching it, I think there's someone's going to pull out a lightsaber any minute. I don't well, feel that Star this Wars. was Star. I don't feel that this was Star Warsy, not nearly as much as Prodigy is. Okay. All right. I well. didn't feel like it was Star Warsy until like a little later in this scene when they get on the 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 um, what the sand razors. speeders. Sand speeders. Thank and you. they're sand speeders. No, yeah. Like that. But um, I. I but it's Sorry, a desert a planet. System failure. I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, well, Lock and Maul, they're on their way here to this dealer. Uh, so we catch up with them. And we meet this guy who's the, who we're told his name was Fred. He turns out to be a Zoom type android. Um, it looks and, so uh, cool. Sorry. The I best, mean, best data this guy was the that's best. not data ever. That's amazing. Look at that. It's Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. It's it's <laughs> it's it's like Data and Benedict Cumberbatch had a had a synth child wow. and it turned out to be this guy. Way better yeah. than I thought it would be. Well, the, yeah, this, Fred the, was amazing. Fred was uh, played by J. Adam Brown, a Canadian actor from Kingston. Um, uh, you know, and wow. he's um, it was he was, was good. Like, he was. Where, where did they find this guy? Who is this guy? He's amazing. Put yeah, him in yeah, all the a, Star Trek. He did a great job of it. Yeah, he was like threatening and kind of data like at the same time, you know, but not in like a lore way. And I don't know. It was really it was a, it was a really interesting uh, performance with this android who's kind of like a criminal underworld guy. But, you know, it's it was kind of a, a cool angle. And so they, they apparently he deals in 24th century tech. That's his like thing. They have self sealing stem bolts, isolinear chips, pads. And of course, this Romulan puzzle box, which apparently is the biggest thing. And he's like, I haven't seen one of these in 600 years or something. Um, and he's able to Whoa. to ben open it. The data cumberbatch. Yeah, the data cumberbatch. <laughs> oh, that uh, looks so cool. It was cool to see it. And so he start, He solves the puzzle box uh, for them, and he's able to open it. Which then, oh yeah, uh, when I was watching this, I was like, uh, data ex machina. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was. Has to, I, I'm like right now thinking about uh, a Hellraiser. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good point. So there's a book inside. It it turns out to be this book from this Romulan scientist. Uh, and so Fred starts looking through it. You know, very data like, very fast through the pages and, and memorizing it all. Uh, we see the symbol that will become important, I guess, for this season and this particular mystery that they're telling this season. Um, and then uh, Fred offers three bars of latinum for this whole thing, which I know, even in the 24th century, that's a lowball offer. I yeah, think. that's a huge lowball offer. You know, uh, but you they should, don't like 30 it. 30 would be more approval. So even though Fred has these bodyguards, uh, the fight turns bad. And uh, Okay, you know. this scene, this whole scene, I hated this scene. This was the clumsiest, goofiest fight I've ever witnessed in Star Trek, and I've watched a lot of. I watched TNG. I, mean, I just I was confused was... by it because like when like they didn't they take their weapons when they came in and then they got their well, guns they, back. They I don't know like like even the 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 imposing ninja like bodyguards just kind of like stood back like the action was like sh shot kind of awkward not that interesting and it was like what is happening here are they really just showing all of this i felt this scene would have been better if they were just like no that's not a great deal and then they just cut back to like michael and book and them running through the streets and then they come to this and discover it and it's all chaotic and he's down instead of showing this yeah i guess we you're right maybe that would have been a better scene. choice because i don't know if we needed the act the, the lack of action here um, yeah and, I, and feel I was like confused sorry first for a centuries old android he was too frightened during the scene yeah. 
and yep. just stood back and watched it happen. Like he should have done a, you know, jump over the desk, knock him out like Data would have done. Yeah, right. it was it was buffoonish. What I yeah. heard, I since I couldn't see what was happening, the only thing that surprised me was that he he died, because yeah. because knowing Data, I don't. I mean, obviously, I don't know how much tact like fighting programming this guy has but like he's supposed to be stronger faster he's right exactly and for him to and bodyguards trained bodyguards to be defeated by by these two sure it says that they're really good at what they do but dude he's an android so that's yeah, the only right. thing I was. I thought it was a, it was a little too easy for them, yeah, to take down yeah. this whole room, uh, in, in my opinion. But I guess this is to establish that they're even bigger badasses or something. I don't know. Um, yeah. So not my I'm favorite thing. You mean they took the weapons from from the guards, though? I guess yeah, they took the weapons back from the guards. Then uh, whatever. And and what and in the in the fight, Fred actually shoots uh, Maul, but she he doesn't kill her. But that then Locke goes crazy on Fred, and that's what you know when Fred dies. Basically, don't you and, hurt her, and then just goes all like goes all super yeah. chaotic. I I I, uh, I mean, yeah, I could have done without that whole scene if they just if they just the if they cut to the moment where Locke said his line where it's like I don't even quite remember what he said, but it was a cool ish line, and he's like, "Yeah, that's not gonna work for us." And then he like jumps back and pulls off his Batman moves. If they had just cut it and went to those guys running through the street, it would have played way better. And I would have been like, oh, these guys are really badass because they just took out a synthoid and like mm -hmm. these two bodyguards, how did they do that? And that would have added a little more mystery to their characters. Instead, I kind of got like this, what are we watching? Why did that happen? And right. it yeah. took me out a little, but you know, I, yeah. I'm all I'm hoping is this leads to Fred being a member of the Discovery ship. I hope they reactivate this guy and he like gets a conscious because I would love that character arc. We'll see. Uh, but he, from the from the moment he's dead, uh, and then so Rainer and um, and Burnham and Book find him. Uh, Burnham actually has a comment like, "Maybe we should alert his family." I was like, "Interesting. Okay, maybe he has a family. I don't know." Um, but you know, Fred is dead, um, and so they're they're gonna try to look at his memory and figure out what happened. So they beam him up. They 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 end up lo unloading him onto uh, Culber and Stamets, give them something to do. Uh, look inside of his mind, and scan his memories. Right, and this is where they figure out that he's a Soong type android, uh, uh, named after Alton Soong. I'm trying to remember which Soong was Alton Soong. Uh, does I remember? feel like it's a descendant of some form. Too many yeah. Soongs. Was Alton Soong the the the, um, the, 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 the Enterprise Soong? I don't know. Anyway, so, but anyway, so they're going to look into this. And this is where Stamets makes he his comment. He was the son. He was Noonien Soong's son. The uh, one, oh, the one that like made uh, Soji and all them? Yeah, he was played by Brent Spiner, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So presumably, Fred comes from that group, like that was you know Soji and all of them on uh, in the in the early seasons of Picard. So uh, he's is he from that android planet then? Maybe, yeah. There's a chance. Uh, did, think did this actor oh, also Picard. played it once in Picard, the bald one? Picard season one. Oh, did he play <laughs> one of the bald ones? Now I'm it, curious. It says he didn't. Oh, okay, uh, never mind that. But he look he does look a lot like them. The guy who did. Although the makeup also uh makes Well yeah. I think they just because they have longer nose and they're thinner faces, and that's it. So anyway, um so so Lock and Maul are on the run on their on their sand speeders or whatever, and so uh Rainer and uh, you know Burnham and them are work and Book are after them. Rainer's not playing too nice with uh Book and Burnham in particular. So there's some tension there. Meanwhile, Tilly's trying to crack into like the database to figure out what the hell their mission's about. And this is when like the Starfleet security people show up and tell her to stop, you know, right away. But that gets interrupted by Admiral Vance, who says, "No, no, no, uh, I'm, I'll deal with this." And he's like, "Oh, it's too bad we didn't get here in time because even he's out of the loop on this mission, even though he's a five-star admiral, and I don't know who has a higher security clearance. Apparently, only Kovich." Um, he's not bad enough to get higher clearance. He's only no. admiral. Yeah. 
Uh, and he, we, we're told that uh, it's about this Romulan scientist, uh, you know, back in this, you know, great next generation era, big air, big shoulders look uniform. I love it. Um, you know, and so he's, ta- he's saying that his whatever his um, his whatever he's discovered is too important to get out and it has to be uh, contained. It's all in this book, the book we've already seen, uh, not to be confused with book, the boyfriend. Um, anyway, so they so, did have book chasing after a book, which I which you mentioned on your TikTok <laughs> live. Books, book on books. <laughs> you, you saw that, did you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> So then we get this whole action scene here where they're chasing them on the on the sand bikes or whatever, uh, you know, headed towards this mountain. Uh, they end up talking to each other, even split screen at points here. Uh, I yeah, so- I thought that was an interesting editing I love choice. It. I was like, I love oh, it. We're going for triple split screen close ups. I love awesome. it. <laughs> I can't remember at a time Star Trek ever did this. Like, no. Uh, well, in they show. went where no track has gone before. There you go. No, you they've go. done some editing choices in this episode that Trek's never done before, and I like—I was for them. Yeah, this is so uh, cool. So, so yeah, because Captain wow. Rainer, Captain Rainer wanted to like blow up the entrance to this cave that they were going to use to escape, and there was a chance—a seventy percent chance it wouldn't have an avalanche of the sand, but it could. And then, uh, you know, but it, it, and it ends up lock them all end up triggering the avalanche anyway. Because they were inspired by his idea. Um, yeah, I was watching and... this and I was like, "Why is this man doing this? Is he not thinking about protocol?" Of course, no, he's not. And they like, you know, in later time, it's like, it's all part of his character development. So at the first, like this whole scene, I was just like, Who, "What?" I was just so just like, "Why would he do this?" And then they have to save it, and then it just got more ridiculous, and the scene just like progressively got more ridiculous. <laughs> And I was like, what well, is happening? We even see there was a one part where like they, they decide that they have to try to stop the sandblast and they need um, his ship, the Antares, to help. And the Antares won't come help until Rainer says so, right? Like, so his crew must have been loyal, like, you know, not to, to say, okay, we're not deviating from the mission uh, unless you say so. And eventually Rainer decides, okay, we can't, we, we have to save these people because they'll all die if we don't, you know. Yeah, stop after this. he like comes over the hill and he sees the like the town and he's like, Oh, right. My job is I work with the Federation. Okay. <laughs> Just come back. Come back. Yeah. He begrudgingly accepts that he has to save these people. Right? So, um, and, and so, I don't know. They come up with this solution. I, what I, I will say that they did quite a few times in both episodes was, like, this idea of, like, the problem solving. How to approach it scientifically. And I think that each time they, they did this in the two episodes, it worked well for me. I, I, I liked it. I, I agree with um, you on that. There, you know, there's a lot more mm-hmm. scientific problem solving in these two episodes than we normally see. And it made sense. In some of the yeah. previous seasons, sometimes like they give me a bunch of techno babble that means nothing, but this one was not that. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, they've done a good uh, job this time. Go, Michelle. Yeah, it was. It worked well. Um, and so, anyway, they're trying. So they come up with the plan that the two ships, the two ships, are going to come down here and basically this use their, a cool their shot. shields. This right? was a really cool shot with the ships like coming in over the city like that. I was like, "This is dope." And then they totally Deanna Troy the ships, and I was like, "Wait a minute, <laughs> does that? Can they do this? I didn't know we could just stoppy like ultra ton." over city size ships and i i was for it but i was like uh, does this work is that that's what it looks like i like it it's the future it's the future again those detached nacelles leave them in orbit like come on um but you know it's but they needed the full full weight of the detached nacelles that weren't actually attached to how can they can't have any weight if they're not attached that's what i'm saying (laughs) what is that how does this work it's the shield it's the shield yeah it's the shield yeah they're they're just bringing in their big shield bubbles but like don't they have deflectors couldn't they have just shot deflector down at the surface and like like pushed it like flown over and deflector pushed it as Didn't opposed say to they were like... worried about exploding the people <laughs> they, they, how, there was but how would they explode the people if they were deflecting the sh- 
the they just wanted to just stop back. it completely. They they yeah. didn't want to like they didn't they didn't want to torpedo it and phaser it. And I get that. My first initial thought was, okay, we'll just phaser some big trenches and make a moat, and all the avalanche will just fill it back in. But like, not enough time. So okay, so they they're coming in with like blast shields and they just stop it at the. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I get that. But that's like. How do they, they just reverse it? They just turn on the beepers and beep, beep, beep. Like, is that what happens? That's exactly the scene we're missing. Yeah. We we didn't see them having to get that out of the the, 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 the earth there. So anyway, Rainer's pissed because they got away, even though he saved it. He does his whole, um, when when they hit their comm badges now, it's almost like it's reboot. Yeah. Reboot. Reboot. Um, And they they pop out here. Uh, And then there's this. fun to do, man. There, there is a long, awkward scene here between Book and Burnham about their whatever. I don't know. This we didn't I, break up. We never really talked about it. Well, we didn't say the word. I think we're saying it now. Tear. Uh, yeah. I was why? like, I don't care. I don't care. Why? Guys. Can we go? Why? Can we go what, find out what's what, going on? What reason for? I feel like you guys could work through this. You stop talking for a little bit. Sure, yeah, but you're good together. He it's... betrayed her. He betrayed her in a really yeah. bad way, and she yeah. gets yeah. to work through some feelings about that. You can't okay. just have someone betray you like that, and then you go, "Ah, everything's fine." I agree with Ashley. I agree, but like, I it's. I Do we like remember this why stuff. though? Like, I, I can't really. The, the scene remember doesn't feel how or why he betrayed her. To be fair, necessary. Um, because he was, I mean, he went against everything. He lied to her and, and went against everything she was trying to do and went bad in trying to help his brother yeah, or friend or whatever I agree. She in the last season. And, well, no, I mean, his yeah, entire on, species got blown up. Yeah, yeah like, like he, he watched his entire plant. He, he became Princess Leia, right? But and the then he went, on, yeah. he went on a genocidal attack, too. Uh, you know, Just like uh, Princess Leia. So, so he's a, I mean, player. just like lots of people in Star Trek too. Yeah. <laughs> and we are coming up to an hour here, guys. So I just want to, I, I, we may need, we're not, we haven't even finished the first episode. Um, right. So we just have to uh, be careful. Okay. So then there's a whole scene after, after discovery comes back, um, basically Saru and Tarina, where he says, I, 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 how could I not make my decision about the ambassador to come back? I have to factor you into it. And then she's like, well, why don't basically she proposes marriage? Like they're getting married by the end of the scene. They're going well. It's officially uh, copulate our names or something to that degree. Uh, I think that's what yeah. she said. But can we the, codify yeah. codify our relationship? I believe is the term she uses. And yeah. So, um, yeah. So she, they're getting married, guys. Woo. Uh, and he is leaving. Anyway, then Michael Burnham goes to sick bay. Uh, looking a little worse for wear um you know and they're they're but stamets and culber have scanned the memory of the of dead fred and they have figured out that um that they can look inside this book the you know the seeing all the clues must be kept a secret at all costs the symbol and eventually they're able to figure out that they have to go to the valine system the, they have dual to find the, du- of the dual moons of valine so that's Leads Burnham to confront Kovich. Um, seems like she beams onto a planet. Turns out just to be like a basically a holodeck. Um, it's not a holodeck. It's his room. It's just this, it's just hanging out in his room. Holodecks are your room now if you want. Right. Yeah, I don't think they have holodecks anymore. I think like, hollow room. He's in his hollow room. Hollow entertainment in our own rooms. Look, he's looking for the for for planets with two moons or something. Uh, anyway, so Michael Burnham basically gives him hell here, Kovic, and basically by the end of this little speech, he agrees to tell her what's what's going on with this top secret mission. He wouldn't tell her anything about before. I wouldn't tell Admiral Vance anything before. Um, you know, but he kind of already knows that Tilly broke into the database and all that. So he kind of knows that this is going to come out. Uh, and so I think this is where he eventually explains the whole story, guys. And guess what? It ties back to Star Trek The Next Generation. Who would have thought? Yay. Um, uh, this, this, this whole, uh, I think it was in the fifth or sixth season of Next Gen, uh, this whole idea of the progenitors was set up and they're like it wasn't even like one of these guys what are these extra romulans he was important the right? one in the back right corner 
he's the dead Romulan. I'm like, okay, sure, why not? Um, and and he was found by some captain, Picard. You ever heard of him? <laughs> I was watching. Is this enough nostalgia bait to make everybody happy? Will they yeah. will they bite them into every? And I'll admit, I was like, okay. I'm I'm into this. I like that the what they're setting up here. I like that they're they've reached in the past of the progenitors thing, and they're gonna explore this a little more. Or maybe they're gonna stick this landing, and everything all about this will be, will will turn some sour milk into. And, and what I mean by that is like everybody's always complaining about this show. I I'm, I've always enjoyed Discovery, but you know, it seems like majority there are, there are a lot of people unsatisfied with it I will, I yeah. will agree with you um you know i kept wondering davin may be one of them and um you know maybe I, I, well, it doesn't matter possibly. what they do possibly. Possibly. never like this girl. no uh, but i don't think like... this is i don't think this is for the people that don't like discovery i think this is for the people that do like discovery hmm i just think it's i don't it's, it's smart to 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 continue to link things to the yeah. universe that was built. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Well, I'm all for this. Like, we're, we're, I'm lo I'm looking forward to seeing. Yeah, me too. I, I love this idea. Yeah, me too. I've it, loved I, this episode since I first saw it, and have been annoyed for thirty years that they have done nothing else with it, especially through the Dominion War. I feel like it should have played a big. There should have been some stuff in there with the Dominion War, and what, there wasn't. Yeah, I, I've yeah. always been disappointed with that. It's interesting how yeah, you bring that up because, of course, this character, it, the progenitor that we saw in that episode, um, uh, the secret distant origin or whatever I think the episode is called. And basically the idea was that the progenitors had spread their DNA into all the humanoid races in the galaxy because uh, they were like the first humanoid race. And they when they explored the stars, there were no people. So they kind of helped uh, expand life. But Salome Jens played this progenitor who also mm -hmm. went on to play the founder in Star Trek D Space Nine. I think that's mm -hmm. tying into your comment there, Ashley, of like, they could have done more in D Space Nine with this. They could have maybe tied it in with the changelings even, that maybe the progenitors mm -hmm. became the changelings. Uh, whatever, <laughs> right? So, um, well, yeah. That, that, that actually kind of opens it up because I believe throughout this discussion, uh, they start talking. Well, I guess it's not so much this discussion, but more or less when they, they get to Valene that it seems like they might be touching upon some ds9 lore you know absolutely you know and um yeah. uh we're, we're almost done our d69 review here what was, what was my most recent founder uh quote from Sloan jens we must not show weakness that's right Sean. anyway uh for jp with love was the episode was dedicated to and then after that we got like a whole this season on Star Trek Discovery. Some of which oh, we I did not see any of that. I, I did not see that. No, I didn't watch this either. I skipped this. Oh, you yeah, skipped I didn't it. even I didn't even have the chance to skip I it. Don't. I was just watching on Paramount and it went to the next episode, so uh, I didn't even know. I I, like I was listening and didn't even know that existed because as soon as the episode ended, I turned it off. We didn't see anything too spoilery for sure like you know uh i guess lock and mall are gonna get on to discovery at some point um it's gonna get on Ooh. <laughs> gonna get it on uh Wait, I don't know, you there, go there, back there, to that shot of of mall this one uh no uh next shot sorry relic or Re Is that... President relic no i'm just yeah i'm just seeing who's behind there <laughs> i know oh. that guy Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, I do know. Him. Okay, keep going. <laughs> yeah, he was wearing your style uniform. Jet Reno was, was show, also shown, so we know she'll appear this season. Are they wearing new uniforms this season? By the way, it seems no. like it. No, no, they're the same. No, they're okay. the same as last season. Um, Culver, Jet Reno. I don't know. There, and and uh, and whatever the symbol. Anyway, so there was just a little bit of a trailer after the first episode about what's coming up this season. Now, guys, we're getting into the second episode. Uh, I'll try to run through the screenshots as fast as I can. Um, I know we've been here for about an hour. So it starts off here. This second episode titled uh, episode. Under the Twin Moons was, uh, you know, starts off looking at space again. Michael Burnham looking out the window and learning more about the progenitors uh, that was set up at the end of the previous episode. This is uh, Saru comes in and he's like, oh, I've been looking into this. We also see the discoveries getting cleaned up from the sand that they picked up. Uh, I like this touch. 
Okay, but if they had shields, why is there sand on the ship? Well, okay, they they clearly landed still in the sand, right? That's the thing, right? Even though they pushed back the majority of the avalanche, but the, but they the were shields still... were still around the ship when they were in the sand. Right, but and I, I get you, but when you saw that one shot where they were nose in, there was still like sand being kicked up because even though their shields took the brunt of the weight of the majority of the avalanche, they're still not will... going to block all the fine grains of sand because their landing was so much force that it's going to kick up and they're still going to like, because they were still, it wasn't like a big bubble ground. It was still like, it was like a half dome thing. Because they, yeah. they put most of their power to their forward shields, which would you, open okay. their back so that the dust cloud will pop up and go over the shield. Is that the shot? Yeah, yeah well, that, 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 you can see that there is like some sand in between the shield and the ship there. So, so it must have gone over the shielding and, and just cover. I mean, this is a lot of dust. Needless to say, they got sand in their shoes. They sure did. And uh, they so the vacuumed it, and I love this touch. Well, from the eight, some dots. The dots got to work. There you go. The dots. They, they got the dots working. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah. Uh, and then we have this board of inquiry here, which apparently the Federation president herself attends, which I thought was remarkable. Um, that she Good. she's uh, <laughs> she got nothing better to do than to sit on what, what this captain did. Um, but anyway. He's, he's, cause a giant diplomatic thing between potentially three different species because he was reckless with his with his hot shot actions that but he didn't really do anything like i didn't think that this made a lot of sense uh yeah he like he ultimately yeah, did the right well. thing um so i don't know i thought that this 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 be, they kept saying michael burnham did you agree and she's like no this guy sucks um, and uh, he didn't listen to my orders, but she doesn't want to throw him under the bus right away. But you know, uh, Admiral Vance is like, "Come on, I'm all about the unwritten rules, but this time we gotta we gotta play by the the written rules." Um, I feel and... I feel like there was a missed opportunity to have that giant headed alien just to the side, not say at least like one line. <laughs> oh, that that Admiral guy. Uh, uh, you know which one on the left. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if I, have, if I have another great shot of him, but uh, I can go back. Uh, where is he? There he that is. One, there he yeah. Is. yeah, he's a funny looking alien. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, Gecko Man. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not looking. Pets. I've seen. I'm glad they're starting to use them now. Now, guys, <laughs> uh, just to talk about Rainer, uh, you know, he gets quite a bit of scene here. Um, is he like, he's not human, is he? No. Mm -hmm. He's not uh, Romulan, and he's not Vulcan, and that's all we know. Okay. Uh, what, I wonder what we're going to find out about who he is. Do you think he could be... I don't know, he can't be Ocampa, because he's over 30 years old. Uh, so, he's been around... Vance is known for 30 years, so... Um, we'll yeah, see he's, what he, too, he's, too, he's, too, he's too emotional and stern to be a Vulcan of any type, and he seems also to run higher on his emotions than a Romulan would. So it's like Romulans are pretty passionate. Um, yeah. But anyway, so this ends up not good here for Captain Rayner. Uh, then after the hearing is over, um, Admiral Vance says, it's not looking good for Rayner. I've known him for 30 years. He's a good buddy of mine, but da da da. And then, um, what else? Oh, I, but I got, you, you got book. Book's going to help you track down Lock and Maul. <laughs> Uh, so Book shows back up here on Discovery with Grudge the Cat, who's back here, guys. Um, and then, uh, you know, Michael Burnham shows up with her holographic cat toy, which uh, Grudge doesn't like anyway. Uh, Grudge just gives a look. Uh, yeah, the to this, is, we this find is a scene where I was just like, why? What was the point of this? If they were just going to break up and now we're putting them in and then we're just going to make them get back together. It's like, what was the so it's just they just need to talk. They didn't need to break up. They just need to talk. Well, right. they get their talks. That's fair. Again, like I, so, there, there's a little bit of like the story here and more of their relationship. And again, like I, this is I was just fatiguing a bit um, in some of these scenes with them. But uh, but yeah, the, so they're gonna figure out where to go. I don't know. 
Like it seems like they're getting past the betrayal, Ashley, uh, and they're going to uh, work. Uh, it's already on... episode two, right? Like we're yeah. like pretty far in now for ten episodes. <laughs> <laughs> it's twenty percent over already. Yeah, exactly. So well, <laughs> okay, that's we're like that's this is we're getting to a point where they start you know talking about like uh, Saru leaving the crew and stuff, and this is. This was my biggest nitpick with this and kind of the previous episode. It's like, we've done this. We've done this whole storyline where Michael is like, you were the best part of the crew and we're really going to miss you. And you always have, like, we did this in season two. Why are we doing this again? Like, Well, just remember that they, they, they didn't know this was their final season. So I would, I would, I also know they had rewrites and had to reshoot some stuff. So the question would be, was this done because they had to end it? So they had to find a way to put him into a new position. Well, I, yeah, I, I'm wondering why, why they decided to bring in this Rainer character in particular when you already, you know, you didn't have to write Saru into this ambassador role. So why, you know, but maybe they, they wanted more of a contrast uh, with Michael Burnham. And I think that Rainer is that in a way that Saru isn't. And it's not, it's, it's, you know, so they're, they're putting Saru somewhere else for this season. Uh, as he's, this is going to be his, back shelf. He, but this is his last mission with the Starfleet crew. Uh, I just want to mention this episode written by Alan McElroy and d- d- directed by Doug Aronofsky. Anyway, so they show up at the planet with the two moons, the twin moons. Discovery jumps in with the spore drive and, um, you know, Tilly's here, even though she doesn't serve on Discovery anymore, uh, as well. So they're get, you know they're getting the, the gang here together. Uh, Saru's going down, and they they they're gonna have to walk to the location because they can't beam down because of a magnetic field. We'll find out about that in this mission. We can get but you this, close, but we can't get you far all the way. Right. I always wonder about this, where they say that they can't beam to the place, and we're gonna, you're gonna have to walk. Why they don't give them like a scooter? Or some kind of, I don't know, even a bicycle. Well, they don't want to. They don't want to mess with the foliage. I guess it's easier to, a bicycle is going to mess with it. It's easier to walk over. How about a hover boots? How about those Spock to... hover boots? They've probably cook... never had to learn how to ride a bicycle. Maybe That's I, true. maybe I have a point here, guys, and maybe you're just telling me excuses. I think uh, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. Anyway. Um, so they beam down to the planet, and they get they, it's, a, it's a cool looking view. Um, I like it. I loved this. It's a cooler graveyard planet than they had in Futurama. Yeah. <laughs> the graveyard planet, no life signs, uh, and uh, it's cool. But you know they're having it's fun quiet. here. It's very it's quiet. Too quiet. It's too quiet here on the graveyard planet. Um, so they're gonna go find the the temple thing to go find the MacGuffin thing, and that's they're headed over there. Meanwhile, Book goes to see Culber in sickbay, to because he's been a, Michael Burnham told him to go do this uh, was to go figure out what's going on with Lock and Maul. Uh, even uh, Culber gives him a hug here that's kind of awkward at first, but <laughs> no, 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 no. Culber is the best doctor with the best bedside manner in all of Star Trek. He literally he's gives. He goes up to Book and he's like, so how are you doing? And Book's like, well, I'm doing He's like, no, that's what you're doing. I ask, how are you doing? <laughs> Best doctor ever. I want him as my doctor. <laughs> I want him as uh, my doctor, too. <laughs> Colbert, yeah, he's a good guy. Um, and then so they're trying to figure out what to do here. They're looking at the footage of Lock and Maul's ship, figuring out that they're maybe, uh, I, I guess Book figures out that they're, thrill seekers that was one of the conclusions that was uh, established here and that he can use he's he's kind of forming a profile mm-hmm. because you know him being a former courier and then being couriers that he can kind of like you know you you use a crook to catch a crook i guess is kind it's of like why did they style like that before they left they're yeah. looking for the thrill silly kids yeah uh michael burnham back on and saru back on the planet they're talking they talk about the old times and there was actually a, a part in this episode where i thought like are they setting up saru to die like, that's I was what trying, i thought too the know? tropes were all there he's retiring he's getting married he's gonna live a happy retired life oh no he's been shot and he bleeds out yeah i was waiting for it i'm still waiting for it but you know they <laughs> 
I, I don't know how many more scenes they're going to have this season, so maybe that's part of the reason they did this. But then, as they're having some, sort of this deep talk, they kind of notice all the skeletons around them in this uh, graveyard planet, figuring out that they weren't buried, that they just died. They might be grave robbers, but what killed them? Not sure. Or maybe it was that big stone hand over there. Uh, let's go look at that. Um, I was okay. so excited for giants to happen. I was like, oh, are we going to get some giant action? That'll be dope. I do like that effect when that's they. That's what I thought, they, too. Yeah, when me too. Phaser, when the phaser comes out of their like, um, you know, materializes for them. Yeah. So, uh, why didn't they? Okay, the one thing that bugged me about this whole scene is why didn't they use the phaser rifle trick in this scene too? <laughs> it seems like it would be handy. Like, uh, I guess maybe. Uh, I didn't. I that didn't occur to me. Anyway, and then the, back on the ship. Then we have a scene here between. Um, Adira and Tilly again didn't care about this scene, didn't care about this conversation. Uh, this was they kind gotta of... science their way into the bubble of the buildings. They gotta they gotta figure it out. They don't know. No, the power this, it, it, this wasn't about the science. This was talking about gray and getting into. Oh yeah, actually no, this wasn't actually a good point. Is where's gray? Did they just write gray out for the sake of writing gray out? They're like, well, we've done that story. We're just. Not going to bring Gray well, back Gray's, for They are going to trail, trail. The next episode. Yeah, Gray is on Exactly. The, so well, Gray, I guess, they... will, be on, it will be in the Gray's next episode. Gray's on trail. Oh, okay. Gray well, went to trail Gray... on the previous oh, season. All right. Gray went to become a uh, one of the, 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 the symbiote uh, wranglers, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Okay. 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 So then, yeah, then they're going to appear on the next episode then. Yeah. Anyway, so then they get into back into like solving the mission stuff um and they find this big stone head they're looking at it um cool saying, design. have you noticed anything weird around you and then like the <laughs> it's like when it's like the eyes open up and like uh i was like really bird. hoping it would be like a, a like a whole head and like a thing that yeah. like and then they became floaty little sentinel eyeballs and i was like less cool yeah, like, if they I were chased by like, like a giant robot, that would have been awesome. Uh, that would have been amazing. I would have been so for it. Yeah, I could see them doing that on lower decks because the, the budget wouldn't be an issue here. But they, they, I guess they went a little bit more practical. Anyway, they're getting chased by these drones through the through the jungle. I think those are Maple Leafs, guys, if I'm not mistaken. But you know, they, uh, they yeah, those are Maple Leafs. They definitely uh, are. Uh, and so they're uh, they're, they're, they're Canada they're, then. It must be, it must be Canadian space, um, and so they uh, they're they're going here. They're they're hiding under a, a rock, trying not to be killed, but it's it's looking pretty dire for them. And the people up on the ship, uh, Tilly and Adira, need to kind of figure it out how to save Saru. <laughs> I did. And I did like the line where Mich or Michael's like, "Oh, we're losing our footing," and then Tilly's like, "Somebody lost a foot." <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh, that was a good line. Um, and then Captain Rayner, who's not even on Discovery, just shows up. Uh, I guess he's I guess he's nearby, right? So he just like he didn't like, really died. show up. He, he yeah, kind of hacked night. into the yeah. It's a hollow communication. He he hacked in. Like, he just how hacked you... in. Yeah. Yeah. And then he starts it's... like talking them through. He's like, well, what? How how does this planet work? And let's think about all the possibilities. And I was like, he, his 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 contributions were meaningful. Um, yeah. And warranted, but, and I was like, it was like, isn't, shouldn't Tilly and, and shouldn't they have thought of this? Before? Like, but I guess nope. okay, maybe they're not. They're 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 thinking two thirty second century. Is that where they're in? Uh, they just weren't getting to the thing that they needed to get to, which was basically how do you turn the, these things off? What's gonna take? Yeah. What's gonna take to turn off these drones? Um, you know, and they're trying to work through the problem fast, right? So. Um, they're getting blown EMF up. turns into EMPs, yeah. And Saru's like, I'm gonna run because I'm faster. Yeah, they come up with this plan that yeah, Saru's gonna run and distract it. He's faster than any human. And I was like, is he gonna die? It seems like he's gonna die. Um I got the vibe like he was gonna die. Right, but and Michael Burnham like, take the phasers. Michael Burnham's gonna take the phasers and use and overload them and then blow up the, the robot stuff. Uh which is what they do. Not really blow um, them up, but give them EMPs, to yeah. electromagnetic pulsing. It's a big old turn off the switch, if you will. Right. Um, not not bad action. I thought it was good. Um, and uh, then she's about to get attacked. I don't know. This goes on for a while, but it's not. This it's, okay. The scene that 
that I didn't quite gel with was when Saru like is behind the rock and then he goes into action Saru mode and he pulls out the little neck spikes. Oh yeah, that's, his... that's right here. I have the shots right here. Yeah. Uh, how like how how do these little thin needle like appendages take out these basketball sized metallic spheres completely? Uh, not clear. Um. But I guess suspend disbelief on that one. I'll su uh, sure we'll suspend disbelief on that one and let it happen <laughs> because when he did it, three more came and just like faced him on the opposite side. Yeah, but so he he's bought now himself. out of out, out of spiky things because he has to regrow them. So maybe perhaps there's a they're like spiky and partially exposed explosive. Oh. No, they're not explosive. They're supposed to be poisonous <laughs> or whatever. I don't it's know. I don't know either. That's why I'm asking these questions. What? It was. It was. It was weird. I'll agree with you. Um, it it yeah. was. It was. It was a lot of. Yeah, I, I. I did feel like I'm like. Ah. If it was one, I could believe it because they would go through the maybe the eye of it and then the the circuitry inside but he would have to it means he would have to okay so he's two flaps so even two might work three was too many yeah see like i, I could handle like he he caught up one and then it spiraled in the other and took them like sure whatever but unless just... two of them exploded and the third one exploded in a blast I'm just guys i don't know if we're gonna solve this uh kelpie and physiology he's badass yeah he's like, action he's Saru. action Saru. x-men moments Let's yeah, just take it. Right. I guess it's his it's his special power. Um, anyway, so Michael Burnham, after it's all over, Michael Burnham thinks uh, Saru is dead, but he's not. And there's kind of a relief here. Um, you know, but he, but he did get shot. And it, his the light on his like, little shoulder pad uh, was flickering. So mm -hmm. just keep yep. that in mind. Um, what happened? Oh, and then they had new. Fa I was like, oh, but you guys are going to get rid of your phasers. But apparently they can just grow new phasers. With I was like, that's handy. Um, and that's what they do. Do, it's, is there, it's, do they grow or they just like time warp them from little pockets? I guess they come out of the programmable matter things or whatever. So, um, so I guess maybe you can have more than one in there, which is nice. Uh, so back on Discovery, we got Stamets and Culber and Book. Uh, and Book, and this is the scene where Book's like, "I got an idea. Let's just like call them or send them an email and pretend on to the be dark a buyer." Web. Yeah, <laughs> to 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 lock him all. We'll send that. We'll send them an email, everybody, and, uh, and, and on the dark web. In the dark web, uh, but first, Stamets has to throw everybody out of out of engineering. Everybody uh, out. We've got to get on the dark web. We got to get on the dark web. But we can oh, But we, Colbert and Stamets can see. But I guess no one else is allowed to see. Um, so, <laughs> they, so it looks like he's writing in Klingon too, uh, on the on the thing. Anyway. So they they get an answer, and then they end up having a hollow communication here with Lock and Maul between with Book. And it turns out that well, by the end of this episode, we'll find out that uh, there's a connection here between Maul and Book because they had the same um, courier um, trainer or whatever or teacher. Courier daddy. Courier daddy. Uh, this is so just... many daddies in this show. So <laughs> many daddies. So many daddies in Star Trek. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> I forgot there was more. There was more uh, Burnham and Saru stuff here on the planet. Was, this oh. is where they they found out they found the uh, the, the the tablet or whatever the, the 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 riddle to get to the next thing. And I was like, are really? Are we doing this and like another scavenger hunt across nine episodes or whatever? Like we like back to that Red Angel thing where we got to go from this place to this place to this place to find something. And maybe I'm the only one who doesn't like that. But you I know, love that. I don't okay, mind then. it at all. I love it. I love that they're using yeah. their brains to solve problems. If they stick the landing, I'm all for it. But yeah, I don't know. It, it's it seems a little it seems a little tried and tested at this point. Where it's like, okay, it's a little tired feeling. Um, I th I mean, yeah, he basically sees it because he has the ability to see like the UV, and they're like, well, let's shine a black light on it, and they discover the message. I did, I gotta ask though, Michael, you might know this. Um, do you know if he's wearing contacts? Uh, well, Saru, Douglas Jones is wearing. He definitely contacts. is. I think I think those are contacts. I I mean, yeah. when I when I bumped into him, he looked mostly like this. So yeah, because I was like human legs. Either those I bet you those contacts probably hurt his eyes because they look like 
they, very large contacts. Well, so, okay. Um, last season, there was a Tellerite, right? Yeah. And Adrian, uh, Adrian Jones is the one who plays him. And I was there for, for the inserting and removal. It's very hard to get in and very hard to get out. And they have to like basically hydrate between every single shot. Mm. And they hurt like a bee and are mm. very hard to see. <laughs> so whatever, if I'm pretty sure the hit Doug Jones's ones are, they might be better, but they're still like a pain in the ass. Yeah. 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 So there's so much detail to them. Like that's, they have to be contacts. Cause I, I, they don't seem CGI. That would be a lot of. Those work. are not CGI. Mm-hmm. Those are those yeah. are contacts. I, I'm just, I I I'm, I'm I've always wondered because I like I see I've seen Adrian's ones. I'm like, how did how did Doug survive his? <laughs> uh, yeah. I, how did how did Jordy LaForge so, 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 you know survive those yeah. other ones? His headband. And it, oh, when, it's when other when one. He took the, yeah, when he took his headbands off, he had contacts. Yeah, he had those big, thick, white ones that he couldn't barely see through. Um, anyway, so after that call, yeah, we see here that book book call. I don't know. Book is uh, thinks he figures out something with them all. Oh, guys, it's hard to. Like, every time I do these two hour two episodes, I'm like, I'm explaining this plot for like an hour and a half. So I'm just like, I get tired here by the end. It is. It is a lot. It's a lot. Yeah, this is a lot. I honestly, I could have done without both of these dropping in one day. Like, I would have been perfectly fine catching this episode. There was no week. sign that there was going to be two in one day until this morning. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but it is what it Isn't is. Isn't that what they it's... released that South by Southwest, though? Potentially. I know this is the big thing now is when they drop a new show, you got to drop the first two episodes to really hook them in. You know, it's like, all right, I also guess. Also, lowers the amount of time, though. Yeah, right. You get these, yeah. which sucks. Um, anyway, so Saru, Saru and um, Burnham, they figured out this little riddle puzzle thing, and then yeah, they it was it, it was it was like a whole like Romulan family. If you know your family, if you know your enemies, go to the back door, and they move the statue. Right, the Ooh, back door. Yeah, and, and they find they find the next piece of the puzzle, and it, it there, it's a map and whatever. And um, anyway, but but. But while they're getting this all going, the system's coming back online, and they're about to be attacked by more of these drone robots, which look very scary, by the way. This is one of my favorite shots in the show. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. the whole image here is cool. Yeah, that is beautiful. And they're like, "We got to get out of here!" And it's coming at them, like, and they just beam out just in the nick of time. Um, but there was also that stuff that, like, Michael Burnham's just like, "We can't desecrate this this area. We have to cover this up." And da 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 da. I'm like, Michael, I think you need to. Um, relax. Um, it's part of her MO. So I it, know, it, it but works. it's 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 so preachy and sanctimonious sometimes, and they're just like, <laughs> okay, um, we'll move on. Anyway, so then um, why she has Rainer now? It's so they're good. They're good. Good. I'm deal. hoping Rain, Rainer's gonna get her on track. Uh, I think they're going to even each other out, and I think that's why that's what, she did maybe, this. Maybe that's what we need because I don't think the Saru is the right energy, you know. So um, <laughs> he's an enabler. He's an enabler <laughs> uh, in the in, ter- in in the Michael Burnham stuff. Anyway, so they 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 come up with the thing. They kind of figure out that the thing they already found, and the thing that they brought back from the planet, they kind of fit together, and it's uh, they're trying to make a map of a thing here or something or other. And uh, it's gonna lead it's to a key. It's a, it's a key. key. It's totally a key. Yeah. It's a key. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's the mystery. They're gonna get there. And so I guess it's a race to see who can assemble. But you can kind of see like I guess the four pieces and what they're all gonna look like. Yeah, it's gonna be um, some like sure. five piece puzzle key, and then they gotta stick it in something and probably turn on an yeah. engine yeah. and all of a sudden the life engine's on oh, yeah. and oh no. I bet if you gave this problem to Reddit, they would solve it very fast. Uh, they would, they would, they would go, "Oh, it's this." Um, but anyway, so they they figured out that Lock and Mall, who already that got the clue, screenshot of Tilly was amazing. Can we go? <laughs> Love. <laughs> Love. I think that normally would have gotten a delete, but you know, she uh, she was kind of thinking there. Um, and Kills them they- with mine bullets. 
they think they, they figure out that the that the lock and Mall are gonna are gonna interpret the clue as going to beta Z, but actually it's not going to beta Z. The clue is going to Trill. Um and so that's where they're headed. We see here book kind of figures out Maul who Maul is by de aging her to the age of seven, I guess. And seven years, three months. Very specific uh age mm. he gives. Um and in going he knows her which will be revealed. Culber shows up and he kind of explains this to Culber, explaining that Maul might be the only family he's got. And Discovery comes back to Federation headquarters. Saru is packing up his stuff. He's leaving his greenhouse quarters. Make sure you watch out for the kelp moss. I, I swear if you play this scene with the scene from season two or three, they, it's, they'll, they'll play exactly the same. They've had it's not their first goodbye, no, by any means. Uh, the first time they've, they've told each other how much they love each other and how much they respect each other. And, and, and I uh, get that, and I'm for that, and I bought it the first time. I didn't need an encore, and it felt like a waste of time in an episode when we only have 10 episodes. Well, maybe I don't know. Like, I, I just don't do it again. If this is it, this is it, okay? And then, like, you know, um, <laughs> every episode is gonna have one now. Everyone this episode's is gonna biggest- have one. This is my biggest nitpick out of these two episodes. Was just like, why, why this again? We've done this before. Mind. Okay, but he's leaving the felt, ship. I think it would have been incomplete if he he's her first officer and they've been together for this many years through so many things, and he's gonna leave the ship and get married, and she's gonna be like, "I already said bye to you three years ago." It doesn't she make should've. sense to me. They would have another goodbye. Yeah, yeah, but have, I don't know. Have it's it's just long, the length of the length of the goodbye, maybe is. Uh, but it is the final season. All right. Yeah, well, it is what it is too. Like, just, remember when? Know. Remember when she said goodbye to Spock, her brother, and it went on. That scene went on for on and on. Like you can have a goodbye, but they they can be a little long. I, you know, that's all. Um, anyway, it's over. They said goodbye. Just see ya. Um, and, uh, and, and so she's back here talking to Admiral Vance, who's talking about Captain Rayner. He had to fire him, force him into early retirement, um, apparently. Uh, then, then Michael Burnham has an idea. I need a new first officer. And uh, she's not going to give the job to a Wushikan or any of those BT people on the bridge. So, yeah, Saru uh, suggested she give it to Book. And it's like... No, I don't yeah. see Book in a that made no sense. uniform. Yeah, I would just like, really a, like Adira would be a more logical choice than Book. You know, so it just it would at that point it felt like oh you're really gonna shoehorn the whole awkward we're gonna have a working relationship when we dated sort of like tete a tete. It's like no, it was to it was to piss people like you off. Wow. Well, it it was the actual. One. It's true. It's true. It was. It was working. You know. I was like, I don't want that. And then, yeah, they when they revealed him as going to be the, you know, the for first officer, I was like, okay, I can get behind this. I'm down with this. So I want to uh, know more about this guy. This this last scene here between Captain Rayner and uh, Captain Burnham, where they basically she's you know they, I don't know they they talk about how he's he's out and how he didn't really fight for himself at the inquiry and whatever and eventually she offers him the job of number one uh she's like well we're leaving at 8 a.m tomorrow offer stands till then and he basically doesn't need to think about it for too long he zips up his his jacket and he's going back um so here we go so i'm interested to see how these two work together moving forward um i you know that's the end of the second episode i'm gonna say one thing about uh rainer and the last two episodes I see a bit of, uh, as Star Trek has always done, they're cognizant of real world issues and, and how our world is going. And I've, I've noticed that him talking about, like, I've been doing this for 30 years. This is how I am, blah, 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 blah. You know, and even then that last scene, he's like, why didn't you say anything else? If you had other thoughts, why didn't you say, well, I'm already locked in. I, whatever. Is, well, who cares? No one's going to listen. That's how it, I, I was like, wow. Oh, oh and, and, and President Rillick going, but the world is changing. The world is changing. Things are different now. You need to change. And yeah. I was like, that's how our world is right now. It's like, it's. I felt very connected to all that stuff because I was like, 
yes, they're, they're talking to us, the audience, and and noting how how people are locked into certain mindsets and when the world what do you mean by that like what example are you i'm just talking about okay there's two things one there i i felt like for star trek fans people are a lot of people especially those who who hate discovery or hate quote unquote new track are locked into they're always locked into the old tracks right from Mm -hmm. before and the world has changed our world has changed everything like we live in a different time now like I was having a discussion with someone, for example, who 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 took exception to how things look now in the show. So, like, you know, everything looked a certain way back in TNG and DS9 and Voyager. Why can't we just have it all look like that? I'm like, why would we, though? Mm-hmm. Why would we, with what we're capable of now, uh, it's like saying, well, we want everything, we want TNG, Voyager, and DS9 to look like the original series, like from I, the series. I get that sentiment, but I think it's more like it's for me. It's not like oh, um, I don't want an exact visual replica of TNG or DS9, but like to change an alien design for the sake of a changing for change sake is it can be a bit much. Like if I you've think seen some of the Cardassians and Ferengi and D- uh, Discovery, the Klingons, the Klingons. Hey, like I, I, they, I, I they might, Discovery wasn't the first. Discovery wasn't the first one that changed the Klingons. Yeah, I agree. With okay, that. but okay, so Klingons aside, blame, but like they also the, referenced the bald heads in TNG. Right, but the, the more so the, the the what I was speaking roughly is like the Ferengi and the Cardassians. Like they're more accented. Like there's a there's a image right now going online about what like Cardassian with like longer hair and super like accented pointy forehead. That's a little more forgivable. But then there's like a Ferengi where the Ferengi's ears are like kind of pointed in certain points. That is portions. an old Ferengi though. But has ev- have we ever seen any old Ferengis have like hard points to their ears? Almost like it's cut I mean, it's and also stuff. Also been almost a thousand years. Um, That's a fair point like, too. I, yeah. Those things don't, those things don't necessarily like if you completely re uh, redesign an alien species. And yes, like the Klingons were done between like um, original series and the first motion picture where they were mm-hmm. redone and then they, like i think like there was a feeling of like that's good now and when they went and changed it for the sake of change sake in the beginning of the discovery just and yes there was a precedent but it didn't mean that the change was good or welcome well it's not um, like they continued with it as seen in strange new worlds well that's the thing yeah. exactly strange new worlds does a really good representation of taking this like nostalgic look of a Klingon that we understand, but modernizing it to this more modernized look. Yes, of what because the they've listened, the world. because we have different showrunners now. And we also remember Discovery, when it started, had no, 10 years with no Trek on TV. And they had an original idea that was basically thrown out, a showrunner that was thrown out. And then the network, like, breathing down their necks to make modernized things so that it was more palatable to now which is why we had the first two seasons before we finally got Michelle Paradise in, at the helm. And, and I'm all for modernizing the image and the set pieces. No, and the no, I'm saying those are like bad that. things. The, the studio micromanaged to the point because they just needed it to appeal to everybody mm. that the Klingons was a decision that I, I actually agree wasn't the best. I 100, no, wasn't. Like, I know the precedent is there. Like they took the lore, they went through the Bible that they have it's a, it's a huge book i've seen it um but i'm like dude it's like it's like ryan johnson with with the episode eight of star wars like, well you know in this book about the force it says you know jedi can have projections so that's why luke did it i'm like but you don't have a act like you didn't have anyways it's the whole thing and i agree with you on what i my whole point though about the message that i noticed being I felt was was within these two episodes of Rainer is here's someone who's quote unquote stuck in the past, right? He's older, he's set in his ways, he has a certain way of thinking. And as President Relic said, the world has changed. And he's like, Well, you know, I I'm no, I don't accept this. And I'm not just talking about Star Trek, I'm talking about the world we live in. There are there is there is a culture war, right? In our world, 
right? And, mm-hmm. and, and people are like split between essentially two ideologies. And the, the issue at hand is that our world is progressing, no matter what anybody wants or thinks, our yeah. world will always move a certain direction and things change. Understanding of us, of the world we live in changes. And there are a lot of people who don't want to accept or find it difficult to accept. And I applaud the writing for at least kind of putting a parallel in there, which again, I say Star Trek has always done this, right? It's always said, used parallels within their stories to represent our world and try to work towards the best, which is what we're seeing here with Burnham saying, look, I know what you're like. I get it. And we, they also show that deep down, there's more to him than the surface that he has put out there. And so now she's saying, why don't we work together? And I was like, mm-hmm. that is so beautiful. It's, I, I was like, wow, it blew my mind because it's saying to us as a society, like we got to put our, our, really hard-headed differences aside, come together, sit down, talk, and work together because we're so divided. I, I, just, I don't know. I just thought it was a good message. That's what okay, I Okay, well, that's I, interesting. But... I liked it, too, because I think she definitely saw in him her in season one, where she was that disgraced Starfleet officer that was given that second yeah. chance that just wanted to do right but didn't necessarily do the right thing by Starfleet, and now she's been given a chance to... to to let him have a second chance and to fix his mistakes like yeah. she was given. And yes. she's clinging to that. Yeah. That's good. Well, the that's good story thing. reason is good too. Like I agree with you that I'm just, what, what I yeah. find interesting too, is that, you know, Michael Burnham is the 900 year older person here. You think she'd yeah. be the more <laughs> uh, like set in her ways or not in this new world or, you know, whatever. And, and she's it's the never opposite. been really that set. I mean, she's set in certain ways. But that's the thing, yeah. right? Even you are like, oh, she's so sanctimonious. But that's the thing, right? If you want to really go there, like you have the you have the left and you have the right. We, you know, and and because of the way our world is, people are very set in in in. I'm not saying like you shouldn't be progressive, but we, we're progressive to the point now that the way our politics are working, for example, if a conservative politician has a good idea a lot of people will just reject it because it's a conservative politician and vice versa vice versa so i think i think the message here for our world not the in-story message but our world message that this is sending is like look at these two captains right they're they're on opposite ends of the way they work and now they're going to work together and this is how we're going to have this season unfold and how their stuff is going to get solved by having two perspectives working in, in unison so that the good parts of each can come out. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. said. well with all I that, think she's yeah. a little more sanctimonious because she comes from a time where the Federation also was more sanctimonious. She's that coming from it? a time where the Federation was this, this monolith sure. that was just yeah. this, they had this, this view of the way the world, was going to be and she comes 900 years in the future and the federation is in shambles so she looks she looks like she's going to be more sanctimonious compared to them because they're they're kind of like war beaten Mm. yeah 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 Yeah. well with all that said guys let's let's get into our ratings and uh you know it's we we, we've i think we've we've had a good conversation here tonight about these two episodes um so uh we'll start off with well i'll start us off uh, so part one, Red Directive. Um, I'm going to give Red Directive an eight. It was all right. Pretty good. Uh, Michael? I am going to give it an 8.5. Eight and a half for Michael. And Murphy, your first time you're ever rating any Discovery episode. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give this one a seven. Uh, it was, yeah, it was, I w- I'm hoping it'll land harder. I don't know. I, I'm seven for me. Okay, and Ashley? 9.5. Nine and a half. Okay, and this uh, currently, as of right now, has a 6.2 on IMDb with only 202 votes. Uh, you know, as this is normal for this kind of time. All right, and so let's get into Under the Twin Moons next. Um, Under the Twin Moons was eh, pretty good. Seven and a half for me. Right, Michael? Nine. Nine from like he liked it even more. Mm-hmm. Murphy. Uh 
Hmm. I'm gonna. Hmm. Yeah, this is. A I'm gonna think about this. Uh, Ashley, you go ahead. I need to think about this for a second. I'm an eight and a half on this one. Eight and a half. Okay. So, um, so for for me and Ashley, we our ratings went down for episode two. But in Michael's I'm, case, I'm actually, gonna give you like part two better. Five. I'm gonna give it six point five. So yeah. you, you and Michael, uh, oh no, you're like us. So Michael's the only one who liked the second episode better than the first episode. Just a sl just, just slightly. It's just slight. Slight. A point okay. five is slight for me. And so mm -hmm. we're averaging close to an eight uh, in both cases. Eight point three for episode one. Seven point nine for episode two. Uh, we'll see what Adam's ratings uh, do and how that will sort of affect the overall. But they both have the same rating on IMDb, uh, which is around six point two. Uh, you know. Discovery just seems to get much lower ratings uh, <laughs> compared to other Star Trek shows. Um, so, you know, take that for what it is. So um, anyway, so episode three, guys, is titled Janal. Hmm. Sounds like hmm. a, a trill thing. Maybe? Yeah, I bet you that's a trill thing or a person. Yep. Trill person. Yeah, yeah. or a person. Good. Yeah. Yeah. And just looking ahead to some of these other episodes this, t this season, we got Face the Strange. Is an, is episode four, Mirrors episode five? I wonder could that be a mirror universe? Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I, bet I she hope has it a mirror is. Universe. <laughs> I hope um, it is. Episode six called Whistle Speak. Cool. Okay. 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 Uh, episode seven called Ar Uh Episode eight is Labyrinths. Nine is Lagrange Point. And the fight, the finale, titled Life itself sweet mm. that makes sense well, i bet you eight is when that's going to be used yeah um any other theories guys about what's going to happen this season you know do you, any any ideas uh or you just leave just don't want to speculate it's okay you know I, I i can't say i've got any hard speculations i always kind of go in with to discovery with like very low expectations to see where they go and like last season they ended on a pretty high note for me going to like the edge of the universe and discovering like jellyfish aliens and stuff like that <laughs> i thought that was pretty cool and i was i'm interested to see where they can go from there considering they went to the edge of the universe like what's what's the what's the plot point and within the first two episodes we get the whole like progenitor set up so yeah i'm interested to see where they take it with that um i hope i hope they bring fred back i hope they turn him back on and he be and he becomes like just give us more fred guy. we're all I calling more for more fred, fred. <laughs> yeah we need more fred we just need a tasha yar to come back to turn that thing on <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> <laughs> well, um, all right. Well, guys, I think we can sign off for tonight. Thanks, thanks to the whole panel, the whole team. Looking forward to talking about the rest of this season with all of y'all and, and Adam. I'm glad he was able to make a cameo tonight. Um, you know, and check out our other stuff here on on the uh, Live Long and Podcast Network. Uh, just tonight, our science division, led by Davin, or no, I think it was under actually Locutors th that banner. They were talking about uh, the the top ten first contacts. Uh, so that that was also on tonight. Uh, him and Dave were going on about that. Uh, tomorrow we are ranking eighty one Star Trek uniforms. Uh, you know, Davin and I, and maybe Kevin, uh, looked out for that. Uh, can, it's, it's, can you give us a peek what your top five is, Dave? Oh, maybe one of one of your top five. Well, one of my top five is probably um, the the Voyager uniform, just like the, the the color top one that they. they oh, it's also the Deep Space Nine uniform. Uh, I love I love the monster maroon, like the Wrath of Khan style uniform. It's still one of my all time favorites. Um, and I, I I love the new Strange New Worlds design too. I think it's a great. Oh yeah, uh, that's a good uniform. one. Yeah, that's probably so, my yeah. favorite currently. Uh, yeah. So I got I got plenty. Deltas in this the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. So I like good. my song. That's my number one. <laughs> Which was that? <laughs> my song. It's oh, your thong. It's my your thong. number one top pick. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, you've actually worn a Starfleet uniform, so yes, you have. So. 
So, uh, you know, uh, we'll see how that one ranks uh, in the, in the whole division. So look out for that tomorrow. And then coming up Sunday night, guys, we are doing our next installment of Star Trek Radio Theater. We're doing Conundrum from Next Generation's fifth season. Uh, Michael Chan's the computer. Chris Murphy is some crewman. We got Ashley playing Commander Riker, and I'm seducing her as the real <laughs> Aaron. Yeah, uh, you are. We're all lost our memories, and uh, we got uh, many others, including Adam Woodward, Jane Mader, uh, newcomer Stephen Waters, and more. Uh, look out for that uh, this Sunday night, 9 p.m. I'm um, going to bring the fire. To bring the fire. Bring it all. Because I'm Ensign um, Kane. And then on, uh, we're, we're almost done our D Space Nine review. Uh, we got six episodes left every Monday night. You can check out Star Trek D Space Nine episode reviews. Kevin Millard and I, and sometimes Jody Simpson, often Adam Woodward, and uh, and and the rest, Jimmy O. Robinson, others, Jeff Mater sometimes. Um, you know, but that's a that's a whole other story. And with that, guys, uh, check out the United Federation of Podcasts. We have a website, ufpodcast.com, where you can find great content like the Hellbound podcast with Michael Chan, Alex Blackburn, Aiming on Track, my son doing music podcasts, Hold Up, movie podcasts with uh, Davin and Murphy talking all kinds of movies and, and, and what you will, graphic histories with Andre Mayette interviewing all kinds of interesting people from entertainment, uh, and, the gra- and the X-Rated podcast with Davin and Andre where they talk about X-Men, the animated series, and now X-Men 97. And lastly, the Super Mater Brothers podcast. Uh, we are brothers. Uh, we are often talk about Survivor. Yeah. We are brothers. We are brothers! <laughs> oh, and the newest member of our network. Hey, did you see this one? I forgot about them. Stephen Waters and uh, Jason Phillips. They're probably well, live right now talking about the Iron Claw. Uh, they they were like on earlier. Sometime. Yeah, yeah, so, and with all that, uh, we're going, we're, we'll, we'll sign off for tonight. Uh, thanks to the group and uh, Live Long and Podcast. We will see you next time. Have a good one. <laughs> Disco Discovery Season 5 Review Disco Discovery Season 5 Review Disco Disco Discovery Starfleet In the 32nd century